standard stat, Antonio Brown. Yeah, he's good. Caught fire over the last two weeks on the verge of history. He's 85 yards shy of passing Hall of Famer Marvin Harrison for the most receiving yards over a five-year span in the history of the National Football League. I love that. What can Brown do for you? Very nice. Brown is also on pace for a fifth straight season with 100 catches, which would set a new NFL record. So could be a lot of things going his way come Sunday. Meanwhile, press coverage in from Mary Kay Cabot in Cleveland. And how about this? Brown's coach, Hugh Jackson, says wideout Josh Gordon, recently reinstated by the NFL, will start for the Chargers game Sunday for the Browns. Quote, says you, yeah, he's going to start. I'm surprised you would ask, end quote. Well, of course you would ask. He hasn't played a game in the NFL since 2014. He has so many suspensions. He's come open and clean with all his problems, Adam. This is an unbelievable story. Trey, in a season that has had way too many stories about court cases and anthem protests and all sorts of legal issues and domestic violences and disputes over the commissioner's contract, this is a welcome story. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is something to watch. This is fascinating that we are going to see a receiver who dominated this league, the only receiver to ever post back-to-back 200-yard -back receiving games. Nobody's ever done that. Jerry Rice hasn't done that. T.O. hasn't done that. Marvin Harrison hasn't done that. Julio He's going to be out there done it. for the first time since 2014. And they're going to start him out of the gate. He's starting on Sunday. Let's see what he can do. I want to see. Pick I know up. he's a yes. freak, uh -huh. but that's fascinating to see what this one guy is going to do in this one game. And I want to see down the road just how it goes. I mean, this you're talking about multiple chances here, so it's good to see him back. Absolutely. How long still you, you hope that he, he takes advantage of it? That's all I'm saying, Coach. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're yes, saying. He, the the yes. ability is undeniable. Right. Absolutely. Well, he seems, he, he really seems, and you, you, you root for him, and you hope it works out, but he seems to have learn some things, grown up, matured, and you just hope it takes hold and stays that way and he stays on the right path. You just hope. And, and, and you, we all hope that because it would be a great story for him to tell. I mean, it would yeah. be a great story when, when this year is over. He could actually go out and speak to people that have been in his situation and tell them exactly what he went through to get back to where he's at right now. It's a great story. We're all pulling for him. There's no doubt about that. He's only 26 years old. You think yes. about how much he's been through. And, and again, it bears repeating. And I know a lot of people have sort of forgotten or aren't completely aware about all the details like we are. The last time he played a meaningful season, because he was suspended for most of 2014, in 2013, he missed the first two games of the year, came back week three, went on to lead the league in receiving yards despite missing two games in a season where his quarterbacks throwing to him were Brian Hoyer, Brandon Whedon, and Jason Campbell. That's how good this guy can be, and that's when he wasn't right. Imagine if he's right and clean, the numbers he can give up, and we certainly hope uh, that that happens for him starting this weekend. The spotlight will be on him for sure, but we also have other pass catchers that we have our spotlights on. And, Teddy, let's start with you, the pass catcher with the best matchup this week. Who is it? The Rams' offense has been explosive, and I'll go with Cooper Cup, mm, the rookie, yeah, because sure. like him, I don't really... They'll find a way for him yes, to get yes. the right matchup. And Goff, this is one of his favorite targets. Robert Woods looks like he's out. Some more targets for Cooper Cup. The production's going to be there. With Sean McVay, this offense never stops. They attack, they attack, they attack. Coop's going to be a beneficiary of, of it this, this week at the Cardinals. I think he has a big week, Coach. I'm going with Cooper Cup. Best All right, matchup. Teddy, if you're puppy up or Hermby doggy downer, who's the pass catcher with the worst matchup? With the, with the worst matchup, uh, when you look at him, is Marvin Jones and, and Golden Tate. And they play the Ravens secondary. That's a problem. Because this Ravens secondary, they take the ball away in bunches. And, and they cover tight. They're rushing well. This defense reminds me of the old defense that made that run in the Super Bowl, Teddy, mm -hmm. where they basically played great defense, put pressure on the quarterbacks, and now their secondary is healthy again. So this is going to be tough. And they got the pass rush coming and That's exactly that right. And Stafford, as good as he is, he's got to go on the road and try to beat these guys. That's tough. It certainly is. That defense already has three shutouts on the year. Teddy, pass catcher you want in any matchup. Looks like he's back. He's healthy. Tied in from Philadelphia, Zach Ertz. Oh, oh, man. Man. It's, they got a relationship going. All right, yep. they've got the whole Gronkowski, Brady, Witten, Romo, whatever it was. Name one. Name one. That was it. But he in the red zone, he'll look. Jeffrey Aguilar, no, where's my guy? Where's Ertz? Seven touchdowns already. 
You've got to double team this guy in the red zone. He's going to be a target. Wentz loves him. He finds a way to get open, and they scheme ways for him to find the open areas. Zach Ertz. All Give right, me that Ertz. guy. You got him. And by the way, I love the fact that it's Wentz with a Z to Ertz yeah. with a Z and a Zach with a Z. Ah. That, that makes it interesting. All right, Herm, pass catcher, breakout candidate. DeAndre Hopkins, and this is a division a game. Uh, they play the Titans, and the Titans secondary has given up 21 touchdowns. They're ranked 20th in the National Football League in pass defense, and this is still a competitive team, and this guy is a tough receiver to deal with. He has strength, he has length, and he has the ability to make big, big plays, and this is a secondary that has given their share of big plays to wide receivers all season. 21 touchdowns already this defense has given up there. By the way, those quarterbacks that I mentioned throwing to Josh Gordon that time, DeAndre Hopkins somewhere going, I know how you feel, baby. <laughs> well, he I does. Know, I know he does. He mean. absolutely does. Adam, pass, uh, catch your storyline to watch. I think it's the continued emergence of a guy that coming to the year a lot of people didn't know but know now, Ricky Seals-Jones, mm. who is emerging into Blaine Gabbert's favorite target over Larry Fitzgerald, over John Brown, over J.J. Nelson. You look at the numbers that he's put up in the last two games, seven catches, 126 yards, three touchdowns. This is a guy that played wide receiver in college. They converted to tight end. There are a few defenders who can keep up with him, and I think with the Cardinals' schedule down the stretch, I think Ricky Seals-Jones has the chance to continue to be a force and make a bigger and bigger name for himself. Well, he was an interesting guy coming out of the draft out of Texas A&M. Was he going to be a wide receiver? Was he going to be a tight end? Related, by the way, to Eric Dickerson. Cousins. Uh, cousins. Good bloodlines, yeah. by the way, if you want to have success in the NFL, if Eric Dickerson is your cousin. Lots more coming here on NFL Live. Next up, Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan goes undercover with a horrible haircut oh boy. Uh, at a local Fanatics <laughs> team store, and the reactions are priceless. It is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> 